School is basically just one of those video games where for some reason people are naturally talented and they've played other video games before and they, they, they know all the controls and they can already move properly. And being autistic is like having a lot of skills in computing and never touching a, a joypad or a, a, a joystick or anything like that to, to move the character and just constantly running into walls and trying to get a hand of, handle of the movements before they uh, try to play any of the main game. This lag of social understanding um, occurs around this age, around 13, and um, maybe even younger, about 10. It happened to me about 10 years old, where all these these people seem to be understanding a lot more that I didn't, and it was, it was very scary because I wasn't I wasn't sure whether it was a problem with me or a problem with everybody else, and I and I assumed that everybody else was confusing and. They didn't make sense and it wasn't my, my problem. And this lag is the thing that um, usually gets people to, gets children to be put forward to, for diagnosis because um, at this age you can see a lot of the differences in social understanding. And as we try to learn about emotions in school and emotions between relationships and friends, um, it can cause a lot more issues uh, because we, we, we find it a very difficult to understand anyone's emotion, even ourselves. And it can take an extremely long amount of time in order to justify and logically explain emotions to ourselves in a way that we understand. Going back to my references about the video game, if you've ever played a game called uh, Skyrim or Fallout, any of those kind of games, there tend to be a lot of uh, things called speech checks, which is, is when there's a probability or there's a certain, certain thing that you need to say to a character in order to elicit a certain response. Um, and sometimes if you've got your, your skill, your speech skill high enough, um, you get to know which one you should go for, for what, for what reason. Being autistic is like not having any of those hinters or pointers. It's like having zero, zero speech skill. And a lot of things is, is just dependent on luck and chance and whether you say the right thing or not. At uh, high school, secondary school, spent a lot of my time in safe spaces. When I say safe spaces, I usually um, would go to the computer room or the library and, and just go, go on the computer with my friends and mess around with some of the software and maybe go on social media if we could pass the firewall enough. So a lot of my interactions with people were limited in, in terms of things that we were doing. And the best way to, to make conversation when you when you don't have a lot of conversation skills and a lot of knowledge about something is to do something that you like and try and find someone else who has similar similar interest. It's the same as with someone about autism, but it's a lot more important for us because we, we do tend to have a lot of knowledge on a certain subject and a lot of the issues that we have with social communication is knowing what to say and also knowing why we say something because a lot of small talk especially even even when we're a lot older small talk can be a lot more tedious for us than anyone else and if we generally want to have an intention or certain topic to a discussion before we before we know the, the boundaries of the discussion because it makes it a lot more clear for us to to understand what we can talk about and how much we should talk a lot easier. As well as going to these um, safe spaces, I did tend to go to this, um, this we had this construction um, made called the, the bridge, which was a um, just a, a bridge between two parts of the school. And we had the special needs department in the bridge. And because of my diagnosis, I was allowed to either take times out of lunchtime or take times out of lessons where I was particularly stressed or depressed and go sit there or talk to one of the, the, the professionals or special needs teachers there. Particularly around the age of about 14 or 15, um, I started to have a lot, of, a lot of complex, very complex issues with other people. Um, 
stuff like best friends, uh, the me like meaningful relationships and and meaningful conversations and trying to understand how I can pinpoint when someone is good or when someone is bad or when some, someone is really nice to me or when someone is really not nice to me and those things can a lot of the time caused a lot of horrible emotions and a lot of horrible thoughts that I had about myself and those thoughts and emotions and um, the thoughts maybe were confusing but the emotions as well even more confusing and so there's a lot of different different ways that I was trying to understand things and a lot of things that I was getting confused about and upset about and um, it's very hard to live life when you feel an emotion and you can't attach a meaning behind it so all you know that is you feel, you feel you feel just uncomfortable and stressed and anxious is usually the emotion that we go and we we place our you know our, our burden on for sadness anger annoyance or discomfort feeling sick it can all be bundled into feeling anxious and for us and it's a very good word for us to just signal that we're in distress because that is the most basic animal animal emotion the all the other emotions are very much human based and we make up emotions based on when what we feel in certain situations so if you know a kid went to went to a party and he was like well smiling is like why do i feel like this you could say that's because you're happy but for an autistic person we need a, a lot more of a as explanation and understanding in order to accept it as a term that we can use to describe what what's going on in here and what's going on in, in our body and around us and why we're acting in certain ways so therefore there can be a lot of issues when it comes to understanding emotions coupled with the the issues with the social stuff the stimuli the overwhelming stimuli that you get from crowds of people and school and it's, it's very difficult to hold on to all this confusion that's just going on everywhere and especially when you know that you work in such a linear and logical way it's hard to understand why you can't understand things the only reason we can't understand things is, is because we want to understand it in a logical way and we can't because it's not it's a different thing and although may you know maybe maybe we'll be we will be able to maybe we will be able to understand it and i'll be able to understand it in the future and i'll, I'll definitely tell you guys and um, i'm always trying to think of ways of bridging the um, confusions that I have about certain concepts or emotions and stuff like that and so all, all this content is going to come out on, on uh, in future videos so make sure you tune in also I'm writing a book so you can look out for that as well if you want to read a book by me why do you want to do that? so uh, puberty happens around around 13 I think it happened around 13, 14 for me Voice start again a bit deeper or oh, croaky. This is usually the, uh, what happens. A lot of greasiness in the hair and spots and bo and lovely stuff. Puberty can be a bad thing for teenagers, and um, it can cause a lot of mental mental health issues because of all the hormones. Also coupled with the the you know understanding life and understanding relationships. More of the hormones that we experience and. Um, uh, during puberty can exaggerate a lot of the al already intense um, sensory stuff that we experience. Their touch can be a lot more intense. Light can start to, you know, give us migraines a lot easier. It really depends on our, on us, and some of us can develop very strange hypo hypersensitivities. It doesn't have to apply to puberty specifically, but um, we do tend to see a lot more differences in stimuli that, you know, is to do with eye contact. Eye contact becomes incredibly hard to do. Um, I found it a lot harder to do after puberty, um, particularly because of all the male hormones and the hierarchical, like, dominance and, like, anger and showing that, like, you're confident and stuff and all those kind of things that come with um, 
becoming an adult and being able to interact with people, it can make things very difficult for us, even even more difficult for us to, to interact and to to cope with other things. We won't want to stim in front of, you know, girls or if you're a girl you won't stim in front of a boy or, you know, I'm not trying to dictate your sexual orientation. Um, but generally people that we like we're gonna want to stop doing the stimming, trying to conform a lot more with other people. A lot of people try to conform, and um, some some of us, and um, particularly myself, did not um, like to do that as much. I did do it a little bit, and it didn't work on many occasions because and um, I, I attached a lot of expectations to those, um, which didn't always go to plan. Our emotions and reactions to things can be more intense than before as it is for non-autistic people. Um, but because of the way that our brain works, these intense stimuli, uh, these intense behaviours can be set off by um, strange or weird things that people around us won't particularly understand. But for me it was uh, it was sunlight. I was very, very much adverse to the feeling of sunlight on my skin. Um, obviously you can see how that could lead to a lot of bullying um, and it did, um, but it's not the topic of this video. No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm trying to make this as least personal as possible and try and make it as general as possible based on my own experiences, which is, you can argue is a bit um, controversial, I guess. <laughs> so with puberty, we, we also get concepts. Uh, we start getting our hormones flowing and most of us start to develop sexual feelings and start to develop desires to be with another person more intimately and um, it can occur at this age and um, obviously it depends on the person neurotypical aspie doesn't matter some people have it more some people don't have it as much and um, some people don't have a, as a, as much of a desire to stay with one person and, and develop intimate feelings some people have more of a desire to develop those sexual feelings that they have and explore more of them. But particularly for me, I had it in, in both both fashions, um, which uh, was a very confusing time, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> I'd say this is, is probably the, the biggest contributor in a lot of the, the issues that I've, I've struggled with over the years, and but I'll get into that in a, in a later video. I don't know why I winked, that was a very... It's a, it's a nervous wink. <laughs> so, in terms of relationships and friends, um, we don't really have a good gauge on how to show that we're interested in somebody. And that is quite an important and pivotal thing when you're trying to um, get to know somebody make them feel safe and also make them laugh and build a connection and um, it's a very difficult difficult thing to do for anybody but more so for autistic people so therefore we can we can usually be bundled into two, two groups and um, one is the very very standoffish type of person who wants to subtly indicate that they're interested and um, may work sometimes if I mean, it works a lot for me, I guess, um, but I was very interested in learning about people and making relationships and stuff. Um, and then you have the other type of person who's very, very confident, not very absorbed in their standing socially. They, you know, they think they're all right. They, they think that there's no differences and the differences are very minuscule and they get on with people a lot easier, but they can be a lot more intense um, in terms of talking about their special interests and also intense about asking about um, certain things like uh, levels of intimacy and it can be quite hard to, to uh, they, they, they tend to go a bit more intimate than they should do in terms of speaking and also in terms of physical physical things as well all of these experiences can leave us very confused and um, can we can we can harbor a lot of um, resentment for ourselves for not doing the right thing or saying the right thing and um, if we know that we're autistic already, it can, can be quite hard for us and we can usually blame our autism for a lot of the flaws that we have when we're trying to communicate with people. 
because generally we get feedback from others and um, a lot of the feedback that we understand or the feedback that we get we, we interpret as quite negative a lot of the time and that, that can um, impact a lot of our future conversations it can put us off and um, talking to people at all or it can alter the way that we think about ourselves in a, in a negative way we, we generally try to learn a lot more about other people when we start to develop want needs to um, sexually or needs to be intimate with somebody. So the only way that we can learn to do that is by trial and error, obviously, but it doesn't work as much for us because we don't have the, the, the um, skills of body language and the skills of self-expression and intimacy and learning, all those kind of things. So we find those skills on the internet. Find it in psychology. We think about it a lot. We think, think about our own theories of, of why something happens and how to make something happen. We watch a lot of you know, reality TV or we analyze people in, in their regular conversations, look at people who have more success with finding intimate partners or it sounds a lot like sociopathy <laughs> Socio I don't even know if I can say it properly it sounds a lot like you're a sociopath and um, it's a lot behaviors can be very linked together and um, a lot of Aspies can be diagnosed wrongly as sociopaths and vice versa and um, especially with narcissism as well which is an inflated ego which um, seems to be wrongly diagnosed with Asperger's um, all too commonly. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and if you want to find out more about my videos and know when they're coming out, because YouTube's done a stupid thing and got rid of your notifications, make sure to click that little bell in the corner of the subscribe button so you know when the juicy content is coming back out. Because you're smart. You're not going to let the bad Google people Google. YouTube, isn't it?